Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good day. So today we are going to present about Queen's Theorem case study. So let's begin. So before we get started, let me introduce you to our team members. So first, I am Nusoyna Binti Gozaid, and the next person is Fahana Hazani Binti Ismail and the third person is Siti Norba Binti Basri. The content that will be presented in this video are including the introduction, the history of Green's Theorem, Green's Theorem application, equations and solutions using manual calculation and method, and the last one is conclusion. For the introduction, uh, Green's Theorem is one of the four calculus fundamental theorems, uh, all four of which are closely related to one another. Uh, Green's theorem relates a line integral around a simple closed curve C to a double integral over the plane region D bounded by C. It is the two-dimensional uh, special case of Stokes' theorem. Uh, the link between the macroscopic uh, circulation of curve C and the total of the macroscopic circulation that is contained within the curve, uh, the curve C is, similarity, is similarly defined by Green's theorem. Moving on to the history of Green's Theorem. A person named Green was the one who created the Green's Theorem. He has an essay with the title of Mathematical Analysis to the Theories of Electricity and Magnetism. In 1841, Green died at the age of 49, and during that time, his essay was largely forgotten. It is usual in physics, and, in physics and mathematics to name propositions or laws after famous people, even uh, if they have little to do with the actual form of the decision. This can uh, occasionally obscure the historical origins of the theory. Same goes to the, the Green's theorem and Green's function. The form of the theorem known as Green's theorem was first presented by Kochi in 1846 and later proved by Riemann in 1851. So, what is the Green Theorem? As we can see on the slide, Green's Theorem shows the relationship between the line integral of a two-dimensional vector field on a closed path in the plane and the double integral over the surrounding area as we can see uh, on the picture above. So, the fact that the integral of a conservative which is two-dimensional field on a closed path is a zero is a special case of uh, Green's Theorem. So this theorem is very useful when one uh, wants to uh, convert a complicated line integral into a simple double integral or vice versa. So uh, move on to the next slide. So this is the Green's theorem. So let's see be an oriented simple closed curve, piecewise smooth, positive and plain, and let D be the region delimited by C. So if B and Q are continuous with partial derivatives in an open region that contains D, so this is the equation that we can use in order to use the Green's theorem. So where the path integral is transverse counterclockwise. So this uh, Green theorem uh, cannot be used simply to calculate any line integral. So there are a few limitation and conditions that were uh, that they are not applicable. So the first one is Green theorem uh, cannot be applied only to an oriented simple closed curve C. So if the close uh, if the curve C is an open um, curve, so you will not be able to use uh, this theorem to solve the equation. So next is. Uh, Green's theorem can be applied only for vector fields in two dimensions, such as in the equation of uh, stated there, uh, the differentiation of uh, y dx plus uh, xy dyc. So if the vector field is in their dimensions, it cannot be solved using this theorem. So we move to the first question on solving a line integral by using green theorems. As is shown here by the picture, we have been given the equation of negative x squared y dx plus x y squared dy and the circle of the boundary c x squared plus y squared equal to 16 which oriented clockwise. Then, on step 1, we have separate the m and n equation following the partial derivative of n with respect to x minus with partial derivative of m with respect to y, so we got y squared plus x squared. Next, from the boundary c, we got 0 to 4 as the radius and 0 to 2 pi for the theta. 
Hence, to get a valid answer for the question, we apply double integral using green theorems by integrating the difference of partial derivative of n and m. After we go through the calculation by integration, then we got the final answer is 1 to 8 pi. Okay, for the uh, solution for question 1 using maples software, firstly, we, uh, we use the width of vector calculus um, command and also the set coordinates Cartesian x, y. And then uh, after that, we define the f, f, x, y, m, and n. Okay, after we define uh, m and n, we need to find the partial derivative of m and n. After that, we use an unknown um, we use an alpha to define the n minus m. After that, we uh, define the r square, and then we can uh, stop our uh, maple's uh, maple code with the integral uh, integral alpha uh, r equals to zero until four, and also theta from zero to to five. After that, we get the answer of uh, one hundred and twenty-eight uh, pi. For the second question, it's different from question 1 where it calculates the area of a region using a line integral. And the basic formula is AR equal to double integral 1 with respect to A. The elite from the picture here is x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4 equal to 1. And we are asked by the picture here to find the area of the origin as demonstrated by the figure shown there. Next, the ellipse equation can be written in parametric form as x equal to 3 cos theta and y equal to 2 sin theta. And the boundary of theta is given from 0 to 2 pi. Then, by grid theorem, we apply the basic formula of the area, which is ar equal to integrates x times with dy. Next, we key in all the information that we have got before into the equation. Then we got integrate cos squared theta d theta. And then we integrate by using trigonometric product of cos squared theta. Hence, through the workings all shown here, we got the answer of 6 pi. So here is the last part of question 2, which is the maple um, solution. So as we can see on the slide, uh, on the right uh, column is the maple command and the right column is output. So um, before we start uh, our command, we must declare using with vector calculus. Okay, so that we define that we are actually um, calculating vector calculus. Okay, and then we must define f, we must find vector field of x and y, and then we must plug in all the formulas, all the values into the uh, formula given. So uh, the formula here, okay, you can see uh, 3 squared and 2 squared, which means it is the value of a and b, which is uh, a is actually equals to 9. So when we plug in there, we must be careful that actually a is power of 2. So we must plug in 3 to the power of 2 and also uh, the 2 power of 2 which actually is equals to 4. So we plug in there and then uh, we use the special formula okay, for vector field for finding Green's theorem. So which is we use the flux formula. Okay, um, you just plug in all that. Okay, so using this formula, we can uh, get the answer straight away. So using very simple and a very short um, working so we can just uh, get the answer straight away so yeah as a result of the project and case study of two different questions presented in this report it shows to readers on how simple it is to evaluate a line integral by using green theorems as it also can be used a wide range of application logically this theorem appears to be applicable to counterclockwise oriented curve and 2d vector field but not for 3d vector fields 
Then Green Theorem is a subset of Stock Theorem where it demonstrates something about complex numbers by first calculating the result in terms of scalar field and vector fields. Thus, it is not surprising that this theorem is essential in the analysis of fluid flows and electrical theories such as Plana system. So that's all from us. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Have a nice day ahead. Thank you.